Hi guys! So, as I'm sure you're aware, in the middle of September, Edward Snowden's autobiography, Permanent Record, was published. I wasn't originally going to read this right away because, you know, hardcover book prices. But then, the very next day after it was released, the US government sued Edward Snowden over it, and that suddenly made the matter more urgent to me. And since I was in the UK at the time, I had the luxury of being able to just walk down the street to the next bookshop and buy it with cash. So, you know, maximum privacy. This has obviously generated some buzz and a lot of people have written very eloquently about it and contextualized it within the larger topic of e-privacy and big data and what state the state is in at the moment and I'm not even going to begin to attempt any of that here. I'm just going to give you a very superficial overview and personal account of my reading experience. Having read it, I have to say I'm not sure if autobiography is the right term for it and to be honest I don't even know what it was marketed as. I'd say the best term to describe it is Edward Snowden's testimony. In this testimony he describes the experiences that shaped him, both in his private life and his experiences with the government. And he describes the long process of how he became aware of the extent of the mass surveillance carried out by the NSA and the CIA and how he arrived at the conclusion that he had to go public with the evidence of it. Snowden describes his whole life from early boyhood on until his involuntary exile in Russia. He describes his school and his college days, his time in the army and overall, of course, his work as a systems engineer for the computer networks of the CIA and the NSA. And the focus of the book is obviously always on this work, um, his work for the NSA and the CIA, both as a direct government employee and as a contractor, i.e. when he was working for a private firm as the pro forma middleman between him and the agencies. Throughout all of this run two major themes. A. His relationship to the internet from the early years on, both his own early years and those of the internet. And the second major theme is his relationship to the US government, from ardent supporter who wanted nothing more than to avenge the victims of 9-11 and, you know, wage war on terror in the Middle East, to disillusioned realist when he becomes aware of how the government or its agencies have conducted themselves abroad and are conducting themselves domestically and how they are using the events of 2001 as a pretext to gather more and more data and with that more and more power over the people and the future. Obviously it all culminates in the story of how Snowden gathered and extricated the documentation, um, how he got the actual files out of the government building and why he decided to go public with the documentation and why he went about it the way he did, um, asking journalists to join him in his hideout in Hong Kong and putting the matter into their hands. Overall, this reads like its purpose is not exactly rehabilitation because there is nothing to repent, nothing to make up for and there's no character flaw that he tries to overcome. Um, but he is certainly explaining himself and his motives. He's basically saying, see, I did what I did not because I'm a traitor but on the contrary because I love my people and it is our own government who have betrayed the people. So he is trying to rehabilitate his image by explaining himself because there are still a lot of people who look down on him and who sneer when they hear his name. I basically agree with everything that he says. I found a few minor flaws with the book. One, for instance, was the constant romanticization of the internet of his early boyhood. At one point he actually acknowledges that the mostly male internet geeks of the time were a very exclusive society. But I don't think he fully understands just how exclusive and frankly repulsive this society looked from the outside. 
I am only about half a year younger than he is and I had some connections to the scene, so I, I know what I'm talking about. Another exasperating thing was this whole talk of and discussion of traitor versus patriot. I just wish we could finally be rid of those categories. And it surprised me, I must say, that somebody like Edward Snowden would talk in these categories. I wonder if he did so because he believes in them or if it is a concession to the kind of reader that he is trying to win for his cause and to convince of the righteousness of this cause. Another somewhat frustrating aspect about the book was the completely dull and generic love story. I realize that he talks to some length about his girlfriend because she is an important figure for him. She just isn't very important for his story, I don't think. And their love story is that's completely boring. They met online, they went on a date, it worked out, they are still together. And to be honest, I'm sorry to say, but this yoga instructor girlfriend of his seems just as generic as the love story, so I got a bit tired of reading about her. But the biggest flaw of the book isn't really the book's own fault. I just couldn't help but compare it to Glenn Greenwald's No Place to Hide, which, um, sorry, looks a bit worse for wear. This is a comprehensive introduction to and history of the surveillance state, with all its ethical, political and practical ramifications, as well as the technical side explained and discussed. If you read only one of these two books, please make sure it is Glenn Greenwald's. When it comes to subject matter, it is by far the more valuable one. Permanent Record, I'd say, is first and foremost a book for fans, even though I know its objective is precisely to convince people who weren't on his side before. If not the haters, then at least the undecided ones, or the ones open to reason. When it comes to the logistics of the disclosures and the goings-on in Hong Kong and how the journalists handled the matter, I recommend watching the documentary Citizen 4 by Laura Poitras. Laura Poitras is one of the journalists that Edward Snowden contacted and who responded first. And in fact, she is the reason that Glenn Greenwald even considered becoming involved. All that said, Permanent Record was certainly a very informative and gripping read. And it is also a good way to refresh in your memory about those things and to make you angry again, because one tends to become numb to even the most outrageous things when they become normal. So both of these get a recommendation from me. Glenn Greenwald's No Place to Hide and Edward Snowden's Permanent Record. With a definite emphasis on No Place to Hide. And that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Bye.